Well, happy Thursday morning, all. I am uh, headed out for a little scoot commute this morning. I'll take uh, my little white PCX back to the warehouse and uh, swap out for the Riker. Or maybe one of the other bikes, I don't know. I haven't ridden my FZ6 in a while. I might have to do that, I don't know, we'll see. The weather is just beautiful today. It's uh, low to mid 70s right now, breezy, air is pretty dry. Oh, it's phenomenal out here. I think we're looking for an expected high today of uh, mid 80s, something like that. It's just gorgeous weather for riding. Uh, we had a rainy couple days. Well, kind of rainy, not really rainy here, but over the rest of Houston it was. Apparently out uh, west of us in Austin, they had some nasty weather, we had a tornado. But we dodged it. Or it dodged us. So, if only the parks were open, eh? <laughs> I'd love to go moto camping for a few days. Plenty of uh, spare time right now. Weather is turning out pretty nice. Uh, it would be ideal camping weather. But all of our state parks and uh, other recreation areas are shut down for the virus uh, lockdown issue. Oh well. I will make do. I'll camp out in my backyard if I have to. I've done that many times. It's all right. Uh, you know, it's a great place for testing out gear, new gear, uh, kind of vetting it out before you take it out in the field to figure out how you need to modify it or if it's going to work for you. The problem is in the neighborhoods, you've always got barking dogs and everything else making noise. So it doesn't make for a very restful evening sometimes. So I've gone through uh, quite a bit of old video footage that I had queued up from late last year. And I've managed to edit and post a, a few videos trying to figure out uh, graceful resume points. So I have a couple more uh, road trip videos that I'm going to try to put together. Uh, stuff from Formula One and uh, maybe one or two other little weekend moto camping uh, things to state parks and then uh, we've got a handful of uh, mod videos for the cub uh, where I changed out the rear ugh, that was a bump I uh, changed out the rear rack and uh, tried out some different luggage options on it and I don't know just different stuff uh, I'm gonna try to clear out the queue and find a cut point where I don't have to go back and look at any of that anymore, just so it's out of my mind. Ugh, this thing's rough. <laughs> the same road over uh, on my Cub doesn't jar me near as much. The PCX definitely rides rougher. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the, I want to just kind of dispense with that old video cue so I don't have uh, that hanging on my head. I can just think of new projects and move forward. I've been working steadily on clearing out my warehouse a little bit to give me uh, some workspace. Uh, I'd like to uh, do some of my projects that I've been hanging on to in the back of my brain forever. Uh, stuff, you know, motorcycle projects, fabrication stuff. Uh, and the warehouse would obviously give me a good, consistent place to do it, sheltered, you know, not outside be able to get all my tools, workspaces, tables, and everything set up to where I can knock out the project somewhat efficiently. So that's my goal. Uh, hopefully in the next week or so, I'll have uh, the majority of the, uh, the warehouse cleaned up in such a way that I can actually start recording in there, and it doesn't look like I'm a, somebody off of one of those uh, hoarder shows on Discovery Channel. <laughs> it's getting pretty bad in there. 
because <laughs> I would take loads and loads of computers and equipment from customers just because they needed to liquidate it or you know get rid of it to sanitize it or whatever and they would ask you know can you do this and yeah sure or whatever so I'd load up truckloads worth of crap and take it back to my warehouse and then just park it there indefinitely <laughs> And I, I am going to sanitize it, of course, you know, wipe out all the data. And uh, if stuff is useful, uh, it's still functional, uh, can be resold or whatever, I might sell it. Uh, but typically what I try to do is donate most of that equipment uh, to nonprofits, churches, small businesses, home users, you know, people that need equipment to uh, carry on a task and they just don't have a budget for it. So, hey, you know freely received, freely given, so if I got it for free and all I have to do is put in a little bit of time cleaning it up, you know, whatever. If it's my spare time, I certainly don't even charge for that, but if I have to you know, put a lot of work into actually reloading software and putting it together for a business function or whatever, then yeah, I'll, I'll charge for whatever my time is in that or any parts that I put into it to freshen it up. But it's not a money maker. It's just a way to upcycle that stuff and keep it out of the landfills. And I just hate seeing functional, usable equipment getting pulped for the metal value or weight. You know, it's just silly. A couple thousand dollar server or something that's still worth money, uh, and it just goes to scrap for somebody to part out. But I guess there's a business in everything, you know, whether it's scrap salvage or uh, selling out pieces. There's quite a bit of money in the refurb game. So one of the projects that uh, has been burning a hole in the back of my brain uh, for the Cub is a single wheel bob trailer. Uh, and I want to make it really nice and fancy. Uh, I've discussed it on a few of my comments back to viewers, but I haven't really let the cat out of the bag on the channel, uh, mainly because I don't know if I've got the time and the resources to get it done. Uh, money I've got, you know, it's just the time, uh, and I either have to uh, work on uh, learning those skills to do it myself or find the appropriate shops to do the fabrication and the work for me, but my idea is to build a, a custom rear rack that uh, doubles as a hitch point for the single wheel trailer. So it's going to be a kind of a curved down neck that follows the shape of the rear fender of the bike and goes back just behind the uh, rear tail light a little bit. And then the trailer itself is going to be uh, a double down tube, you know, traditional type trailer. It'll have uh, a cub, a rear wheel, or even a front wheel, uh, and then uh, the dual rear shocks and uh, a fiberglass body that mimics the shape of the front leg shield of the cub and then kind of morphs to uh, follow the lines of the, the rear fender. So I'll take molds of the existing pieces, that way I get the shapes and the dimensions roughly correct, uh, but through the body section, uh, it's just going to be a hollow body, and then the, you know, where the seat and the, the tunnel area would be of the cub, uh, it's just going to be a flat lid, so I'll use the same color schemes as the cub has, uh, that kind of off-white, light blue color, whatever it is, uh, that dark blue, Nilvita blue color. Uh, and then the red for the flip lid on the top of the scooter body, or the trailer body. Hook it up with the electricals and all that, signals and everything else. It'd be pretty cool. My initial estimates on it, uh, just materials, weight, and things like that. I think the whole trailer can be done uh, at about 85 pounds. Uh, give or take a few pounds, depending on how I finish out the body and all that. I think it'd be pretty cool. The other project that I had really put a lot of uh, thought into 
lot of research, uh, started getting into CAD design for it. I, I don't know CAD well enough to do it efficiently. I'm very much a newbie. Uh, Fusion 360 and things like that uh, is a sidecar. Uh, I really wanted to make a leaner sidecar, uh, one that articulates independent of the, uh, the frame of the bike. Uh, so it's not a rigid hack where you're, you know, triangulated. Uh, the bike can still lean and the, the sidecar stays flat to the pavement. And they're not really all that terribly complex, uh, but it involves building a frame and, you know, the pivot linkage and finding a place to fabricate and attach the uh, mounts at the front uh, just above the uh, bottom of the motor mount in the front and then uh, in the rear somewhere kind of along where the swing arm bolt is uh, so that sets up your two toe points for your sidecar but of course the having the sidecar out to the side of the bike introduces all the aerodynamic drag and the yaw effect of accelerating and slowing um, so there's more involved with the sidecar the single wheel bob trailer in the back leans with the bike it follows the bike exactly where you go uh, it's in your wake behind you aerodynamically so there's no more drag uh, you've got the weight uh, to contend with you know for acceleration and braking and whatnot but it's much less than you would uh, deal with uh, compared to a sidecar so i don't know i, I want to do both <laughs> certainly don't have the time I often think about my uh, career path and everything that I've done over my life and you know, how I've, things that I've done. I, I'm very fortunate and I'm not disappointed in any way at all, but if I had it to do over again, I think I would have probably pursued uh, mechanical engineering because I really enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's more my passion than anything else. I like tinkering and working with my hands, but not so much at a layman's level. I want to do it full bore, uh, you know, down to the T's, you know, full engineering, full CAD cam, you name it, uh, and get down into the nitty gritty stuff that could just be transferred right over to assembly line. That's what I like. I like the, the process automation and uh, repeatability uh, of very definite engineering projects. So, I don't know. I'm only 49. I guess I could uh, start a new career path, huh? <laughs> God, I would hate to go back to school now, though. I don't think I could do it. You always hear from people and see stories about people going back and getting their masters and changing entire career paths, uh, doing four or six more years of uh, college uh, in their you know, midlife, uh, or midlife crisis or whatever you want to call it. But if I had nothing but time and money, yeah, that's what I would do. I'd just be a professional student, tinker and build and ride and have fun. But you know, reality comes a calling and uh, there's responsibilities and bills to pay. That building is pulling down some air currents. It's your turn. Go ahead. All right. You're going to wait for me? Thank you. That's nice. So along the mechanical engineering theme, uh, one thing that I've never spent time learning to do is to weld and uh, metal fabrication. I've done, you know, basic hackery, uh, hacksaws, torches, uh, cutting metals, things like that, but I've never gotten into machining or fusing metal, and uh, that's what really interests me. I have quite a few welding and fab projects that I want to do, but I don't have the tools or the experience doing it, so 
I guess I'm just going to have to go out to uh, Harbor Freight and buy me a cheap-ass uh, MIG TIG welder, stick welder, and start playing. And that's another reason for clearing out the warehouses, so I've got space to do that. I don't really want to go through uh, retrofitting my garage. I don't have enough power out there uh, in the garage for uh, the arc welders and you know high electrical draw items. So in my warehouse, I've got plenty of power. And it's a whole lot easier to string these circuits out of my electrical panel if I need to. And it keeps it clean and away from uh, the toddler and all that. I don't want to uh, worry about the toddler getting into caustic chemicals or things that could hurt her. I've got enough of that in the garage already. One of my workmates, uh, a buddy of mine that I've known now for 20 years, uh, he's kind of in the same boat. He likes to tinker and uh, he's a go-fast guy. and. He's, uh, he said that he's always wanted to learn to weld, and we've threatened a couple times to sign up in one of the local uh, vocational colleges, community colleges around here, and take welding classes. But every time we do it, there's always something in the way, you know, his schedule, my schedule, uh, or, you know, the classes are full, or they've been postponed now like this with the, the virus scare. So it's always something getting in the way. So I'm going to do it the self-starter way. I'm just going to buy the equipment, park it at the warehouse, and uh, put a nice big 50-inch uh, LED TV out there hooked up to YouTube, and I'm going to start watching <laughs> training videos on YouTube. Learn to weld, man. The other part of that, the fabrication side, I would love to get into, you know, machining and all that, but, you know, then you got to get lathes and uh, all kinds of custom fixtures and jigs and all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, there's enough of that with welding. Uh, once you get into the machining side of things, it gets real expensive real fast. So I will just farm those kind of things out to uh, local metal fab shops if I can locate them. This is Houston, so I'm sure we have tons of them. I just don't know who to talk to. I've never gone down that path. I'm going to go ahead and jump up on the highway here because I hate this next set of lights. They take forever. It's windy out here today. See those flags ripping over there? This one here too. It's pretty windy. Winds are steady at 15, gusting to 25. I go. Bump. White Honda, White Honda. All right. Okay, well, got some work done here at the office. Not a lot, but a little. <laughs> I'm going to head over to my uh, warehouse now and try to clear out some more crap there, make the space a little bit more usable, and swap out for the Riker or one of the other bikes. Uh -huh. This weather's kind of nice. I might get the FC6 out and take it out for a back road blast or two.
Hmm. It's going to make getting out here a little tricky. Phone out of my back pocket. Click. I swapped out my uh, Garmin, or sorry, my Garmin, uh, the Ram uh, X Grip, X Mount uh, for the quad lock. I've used these quad locks in the past. Um, I like them. They're very handy and they're excellent for motorcycles. Uh, my only drawback or reservation with them is the quality of the phone case. Eh, they're a little limited on their protection. Uh, there's not nearly as much uh, rubber bumper uh, on the edges, uh, you know, really anywhere on the phone. And they don't have enough edge protection for the screens. So I generally prefer the OtterBox cases uh, because they've got a lot more bump protection, screen protection, camera, everything on the back. Uh, in order to use these uh, quad lock mounts you need their phone case or you can get the universal quad lock adapter plate that's kind of a uh, adhesive uh, plate that you can glue onto the back of an existing case or existing phone the problem with those uh, adhesive mounts is they don't really stick to rubber very well uh, and i had one of them come off uh, on my bicycle uh, quite a few years back, several years back, and uh, my phone went tumbling off onto the pavement. So I don't really trust those add-on mounts. It's much better to have the, the full case that uh, has the mount molded into it. The other uh, quad lock style, uh, which was the original quad lock came after, I believe, uh, is rock form. Uh, rock form mounts are great. Uh, but again, you're required to use their case, uh, and it's not quite as robust as the OtterBox cases. Uh, the one thing I will say in Rockform's favor is their phone cases have the magnet built into the back of them, and they're fantastic uh, in my line of work uh, because I'll be working on uh, server racks and things like that, and uh, I can just toss my phone right up against the metal server rack and it glues itself up there. The magnet sticks right to it and I can talk hands-free and still see the screen and all that. So that's kind of neat. But again, they don't have nearly as good a impact protection as the uh, OtterBox cases. So it's a trade-off. Convenience versus protection. I'm interested to see uh, the ADV 150 scooter. Uh, see how the suspension feels on that thing. Uh, I wonder if it's any smoother than the PCX. It's got several inches more suspension throw, so uh, it might be smoother. <laughs> 